When I saw this Mozza R9 on sale on Facebook Marketplace for 200 ringgit, or about $50, I dropped everything I was doing and messaged the seller right away, who agreed to meet that afternoon, meaning that I was going to have to skip out on my car service appointment. After dealing in the middle of nowhere, I slowly started to realise what I was getting myself into. The base came with nothing, no box, no wheel, and more importantly, no power supply, meaning I wouldn't even be able to test it if it powered on. It wasn't until I got home when I realised the terrible physical condition it was in, with the seller having claimed that he dropped it on the way to meet me. It definitely didn't help me with the confidence that the wheel I just bought was actually still working. It was also then when I realised that buying a new power supply would cost me more than 300 ringgit from Mozza directly, or about $80, with a compatible steering wheel being 2,000 ringgit. Suddenly, the 200 ringgit doesn't seem like such a good deal anymore, even if it was in working condition. So, obviously the $80 power supply was a no-go, as it would be a further waste of 300 ringgit if I bought it just to find out the wheelbase doesn't even work. So instead, I went online to find some info on how to build my own replacement power supply. However, the only lead I could find was a comment on a Reddit thread. Now, not only do I have to gamble on whether the wheelbase works, I don't even know if this random pinout provided by the Redditor was going to be correct, meaning I could just end up creating some magic smoke. With no other course of action, I committed to buying a generic 36 volt 5 amp power supply with the intention of salvaging one of my EVGA modular 6 pin cables to splice it with. After a few weeks wait, the parts finally arrived from China and I got to work soldering the 6 pin to the power supply. If I had to do this again, I would recommend using one of these mean mill power supplies as it would be much easier to wire up the three positive and negative terminals. In the end it did work out though with the 6 pin wired as shown. So thank you Random Redditor. Look at that. Look at that. Holy shit. Next, I had to make my own wheel. And since I mostly drive endurance and F1 cars, I decided to build an F1 or a GT style wheel instead of just buying a round 70mm wheel. Since I only have access to a 3D printer, that means no cutting of aluminium or carbon fibre, meaning my options were quite limited with this one from Thingiverse seeming to be the best one available for free. The parts all took a total of around 20 hours to complete printing using PLAF. This includes the magnetic paddle shifters from AM Studio. Given the load that this steering wheel was going to face from the direct drive wheel base, I upped the counts with the perimeter, top bottom layers and infill. All in all, I needed about $30 worth of electronics for the wheel itself, including an off-brand NRG quick release from AliExpress. Assembly was pretty straightforward starting with filing out the 3D printed parts, especially important for the handles as it's what I'll mainly touch while racing. The shifter parts were also important to get filed down to ensure it works smoothly. A more detailed assembly guide for the shifter by AM Studio is linked in the description. I did have to make some adjustments to the shifters as I bought the larger KW12 micro switches instead of the KW10s that he recommended. I decided to remodel some of the pieces to fit this larger switch as it did felt more robust. Since the original wheel design was for Logitech G29, I also had to remodel the shifter mounting plate to make clearance for the energy quick release which was much bigger. At the same time, I removed the unnecessary obtrusion from the original AM Studio shifter design. I'm quite satisfied to have used these larger KW12 switches because they do feel more robust, which is important for how often you'll be shifting during a race. Note that I am using a layer of electrical tape between the magnets to keep them from directly smacking into each other which could cause them to chip and rust over time. Wrapping the body pieces with vinyl was much harder than I expected, given the large radius curves than the care that I had to take with the heat gun, or, or heat hair dryer in this case, as to not soften the PLA. And actually in the final version, I just gave up on it and stuck with a white look to match the Mozart base. Fitting the buttons onto the faceplates was as easy as screwing them into place with the hex nuts. And the only caution I had to take while soldering the wires was to keep the iron on them for very brief moments because the heat were causing their plastic housing to soften. The USB controller wiring was also very simple as this design had ample space to stuff all the cables in. Wrapping the grips with thin badminton grip tape made all the difference in feeling when racing, especially in VR, giving the wheel a very solid feel. And to neaten up the cabling, I tucked the stress relief through the small slot at the back and wrapped the wire around the post using heat to give it the coiled look and keep them off my knees while playing. All the hardware I used were according to the Thingiverse item description with added M6 and M5 bolts for mounting the quick release and the wheelbase. I ran into an issue where the sticker on the back of the recommended 30mm M3 bolts 
were much more than 7mm, which ended up colliding with the shift disc. This made me unable to properly tighten them down, causing the whole face plate to crack during my first few test runs as the lateral loads were too high. It was also a mistake on my part to have printed this top piece with lesser walls as I assumed it was only a cosmetic part. To make sure this doesn't happen again, I reprinted the top piece with more infill and walls, ordered the proper 25mm screws, and also used some washers to fill in the gap between the grips and the wheel for a tighter fit. The final result was a 9mm direct drive setup for less than 600 ringgit or $140. The DOI power supply works at 3 for much less than what I was asking for, and the wheel is now holding up better than I could have hoped for. I did not expect a fully 3D printed solution to be so solid, but I do plan to add a D-pad and analog stick to the faceplate to max out the USB controllers, because I am low on inputs at the moment. The Mozart R9 feels so much more detailed than my outgoing T150, an upgrade that I never knew I needed.